Hi there, Graham from Penguin Motors here. Today we're bringing part two of the video series on Rusty the V8 Rover, where we continue the strip down. All right. First up, the piston. Um, yeah, a bit dirty. Definitely silently second hand. And most notably, it might have had a rebuild, but it didn't get new rings, because these are shiny all over. These are fully bedded in. If I switch to the other end, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but we've got some scoring going on there. See, just there. And actually, this was assembled with the cap the wrong way around. Now, it is easy to put a cap on the wrong way around, and it's easy to get confused which way to go, but as a simple check before you bolt it all together, if the cap is together, if you run your finger around the join, the join between the two halves should be virtually imperceptible. If you can feel it with your finger, it's probably wrong. The cap's the wrong way around or it's on the, on the wrong rod. When they're right, basically you cannot feel that. So the block itself. Nice and sticky with gungy, um, oily stuff. The rod journals feel and look remarkably good. But, even with all the pistons and rods out, this crank is tight. It's very tight. You should, you should easily be able to push it with just thing, finger or thumb pressure. Now, why is it tight? Well, it could be a bearing issue or a cap issue, but the caps are numbered. One, two, three, four, five. Five can't be wrong. The middle one's got the thrust on it, and they've got arrows pointing forward, so the, if the caps are from this block, they're correct. I can see and feel slight end float. So it's not tight on the thrusts. My guess is the rear main and the uh, rope, oil seal. Right, so let's have that rear main off. Okay, it turns, but it's still fairly tight for what it is. Let's just uh, loosen a few more caps and see. Is that the culprit? See the shininess? I suspect the bearing was sitting on the gungy edge of the cap so it didn't seat properly. Right, looking down the cylinder bore here, three things come to mind. Firstly, it's quite glazed up, it's clever, it never had a hone. Secondly, gunge and rust down the bottom. And thirdly, these are water marks. This is where the engine sat with water on top of the pistons. And that's caused some mild corrosion to the cylinder bore. So 100% it needs a hone. And ideally, this block wants refacing. See the brown mark there? That's where there's a low between the liner and the block. And it's probably a result of the early tin head gaskets, which tend to, when they're old, they tend to flap and wobble and they tend to fret. So the block wants a face as well. Here we're looking down the um, 
oil galleries that supplies the hydraulic lifters. As we can see, there's black bits of muck and gunge in there which feed the lifters. Now it might stay harmlessly stuck there or um, it might decide to detach itself and go up the hydraulic tappets which will obviously cause noise and wear and other such strange things. So to cure that, we need to properly clean the block and we need to take out the uh, gallery plugs at both ends. The gallery, gallery plugs at the front, like a core plug affair, with a few extra stakes to hold them firmly in. Um, various ways of extracting them. Um, it's difficult chopping them out with a chisel. Um, old school uh, dent puller with a screw and a hole will work. Or take out the gallery plugs from the other end and knock them through. Let me see if I can show you the gallery plugs at the back. These are the plugs at the back of the engine that plug lifter oil feed bores. They're locked-tighted in from the factory. They are in there really, really tight. Best thing to do, especially if you might have to reuse them because it's not easy to get, get ones to suit the earlier P6 blocks. I believe the later ones are metric and don't fit. Is get them nice and hot. Heat them up with a blow lamp and a firm fitting socket and they should unscrew. If they don't want to unscrew, get them a bit hotter. Core plugs often look perfectly good on the outside, but often inside they're about to rust through. As cheap as chips, there's no reason not to change them. So quite easy to change. Hammer, punch, chisel, hit one side. And that tips them up. And then you can wiggle them out, pull them out with a pair of pliers. This one, you can see pits. It's very thin, wouldn't have been long before they were leaking. All right, there we go. I've zoomed you in a bit. We can see a lot of muck and debris inside there, all ready to bung up your freshly refurbished radiator. Nice clean looking, clearly it's been refaced although we have more of an issue, more of that in a second. The combustion chambers are clean, the valves are obviously clean, they've clearly been uh, decoked. So what I want to do at the moment, because this isn't going to be a no expense bed rebuild, I want to check to see if the valves are seating. So to do that, I've got my mitty back and a backing pad. And if I place the pad over the combustion chamber and pump the gauge, there we go, we've got a vacuum. And the vacuum proves that the valves are seating. So nothing wrong with the valve seats. However, we do have a bit of a glitch. Let's see if I can get you in a bit closer. What we have here is a hole for the dowels that stick out the block. And that mark there is a scratch. And that's where Someone's dragged the head across the dowel trying to locate it. The unfortunate thing for that is that that scratch goes right under the firing for the head gasket. So we've got a scratch in the head in one of the worst possible places. The gasket may just trap it, but unfortunately, I think to be on the safe side, we need to give the heads another light face. And unfortunately, it's like it on all four holes, but that's the worst one. Fifty point eight one something or other. So the big so the big end tolerances are are okay. Little bit of scuffing, 
that main is fairly rough, which I don't like. Eight point four one. Yeah, so fifty eight point four one. The the maximum diameter of that is fifty eight point four two, so it's close to it. So even though that journal looks fairly ribbed, I think the crank will polish and we'll get away with the polish and be able to reuse it. Here we have the front cover, which has got a lip type seal in there. The only odd thing is the lip seals the wrong way around. It will try and keep oil out the engine rather than try and keep oil in. But you may remember in the last episode, I mentioned there's an old pump spacer in there. I'm not particularly keen on them. If the gasket thickness is, isn't just quite right, you either end up with too much clearance or you can end up with a binding oil pump. There's something wrong with this because if I put a screwdriver in the end there to try and turn the oil pump, it's fairly stiff and I get there and it stops. It doesn't want to turn anymore. If I try and go back half a revolution, it's notchy, gets there and doesn't want to turn anymore. So there is something wrong in there. So we, either the gears are the wrong length, the gaskets are too thin, the space is a funny length, it's not lined up, but we need to pull the oil pump to bit. Right, so let's have a look in this oil pump. Gears themselves don't look too bad. But the Vaseline is almost solid. But I'm not sure that extension actually lines up very well with the oil pump housing. There's a step there and there's a step there. Let's just put this gear back in on its own. Let's get rid of some of that goop. Let's just put this gear back on its own. It sounds slightly scratchy, but it does turn. Let's try the small one. Well, we have got some sound of very slight contact, but it does turn. So the stiffness here, some of that may just be the fact that it, the temperature is currently below freezing. And that Vaseline, which is years old, is literally just dry and really thick and stodgy. So maybe with the old pump, we're all right. Maybe. Rather, that seems to, that gear seems to stick up a lot there. Not sure. We're going to have to check it that out. We're going to have to check that out properly when it's all cleaned up. So what I'm going to do next? 
give the bores a nice coat of some light oil. And I'm going to give them a quick rub up and down with my three legged hone. All I'm looking for here is to see that the rust disappears, which it seems to. So let's do the others. Well, there we go. We've got rid of all the rust. We've got a good rub of the hone. As you can see, all these dark lines where the hone stones haven't actually touched. So the dark bits are wear. Probably ideally this wants a rebore. Um, but I have re-ringed worse. So I think what I'll next do, I'll have a quick measure up and see uh, what the wear and the misshapenness of the bores is and then go from there. All right, what I'm now gonna do is take my bore mercer and have a measure the bores. I'm not actually going to measure the size, I'm going to measure the wear. So there, the bore is four thousandths of an inch smaller than it was on the virgin part of the top. And just in that dark patch in there, we've got a thousand worth of wear, so we've got near, nearly five thousand bore wear. So unfortunately, this block wants a reball. So there we have it. It's pretty, of a mix, pretty much a mixed bag there. From, we've gone from an engine that we hope to just dyno to one that uh, now wants a re rebore, new pistons, crank grind, but probably polish. Um, the heads could do with another face. Cam's mint, followers are mint. Um, but unfortunately this is way, way more than my client was expecting because he was hoping this was a good engine ready to go and it's anything but. So I don't know if there'll be a part three, but if there is, it'll appear here. And I'm sure that be it this engine or some other engine, um, we're gonna come up with something for this. So Rusty will live on, but Rusty might be a completely different engine. Well, you know what to do guys. If you like this, you know, click, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll catch you on the flip side. See you later.